Welcome back into Fox Team Friends. It is Eli right here on 94.3. And we have two very, very, very special guests right here in the Appalachian Wireless Studios, Mr. Frank Parsons and Thomas Honaker. Boys, how are y'all doing? Welcome. Doing great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just happy to be here. Now, y'all two just got reunited, in a sense, I guess, at a family reunion just a little while ago. How long has it been since y'all two seen each other? 62 years. 62 years. Wow. So I just hit it off right again. All right, buddy. I'd like to say something along about that point. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. He, he found me in the... And was then standing in my front of my living room, and we're, he came through the door, standing at the living room. Yeah. And we looked at each other. And I was stunned. I didn't know what. I, I thought I was looking into a mirror. I was looking at my brother. Man. Oh, wow. It just, it happened. Yeah. Gosh, it's gotta be crazy after so many years, just looking somebody in the face and knowing that that was that's your brother. Yeah, uh, so it's a very beautiful thing that y'all are back together also. Well, this uh, came about through uh, Thomas, who arranged and had a lot to do with the family reunion, which occurred, uh, I'll, let, I'll take it, let Tom take it over there, because he, he, was, he just informed me when it would be and where it would be. Oh, okay. So he can take it, if you'll talk to Thomas. Oh, yeah, there. yeah, of course. Go ahead, buddy. Okay. Every second Sunday in August, our family guests are get us together. And this year we happen to have my brother. And there's a lot of people really, who are you, you know? Why? Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as I looked at him, you know, I knew who he was. Yeah. And, uh, of course, I asked him to come up and play for us. I didn't know whether he would or not. I was just hoping that he would. Mm -hmm. Then I got another brother pretty close to him, and uh, he's not able to come up, or he would have come up. I see. I knew him mm. a lot better than this brother. Mm. That's understandable, buddy. Uh, I told my wife, I said, after I retire, I'm going to get a little old motor home and go find him. Mm. His little old motorhome happens to be a BMW brand new <laughs> motorhome. Oh yeah, we seen that uh, right up the street there. Looking yeah, good, man. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful ride. It's the diesel and all that, you know. So it's comfy too. Twenty miles to the gallon, and boy, am I jealous about that. <laughs> 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 Seems like the only way I can fill mine up, I have to turn the motor off. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's getting about that way nowadays. What? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> and to be honest, buddy, this is my first time seeing bagpipes in person. Can you see these pipes very well? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, excuse me, Tom. Will you hold that one up for me? <laughs> Those are beautiful. <clears throat> I'll describe a little bit for you. Yeah, if you don't mind. There's a reed in this. This reed is in the shanter. The shanter carries the tune. Okay. This is the blowpipe. The blowpipe feels the air for the... For the blowhard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this long one is the bass re. It's the bass tenor. A uh, bass. Uh, it dro uh, drone. Yeah. And there's a reed in it also. Okay. These two it's here are tenor dr uh, tenor drones. They also each have a reed. Wow. This particular pipe, circa 1900. Mm -hmm. They're valued like about twelve thousand dollars for these pipes here. My They're goodness. collector's wow. items. Yeah. I have another set, two thousand one, but I really like these. The nostalgia, I guess yeah. you would say. Do mm -hmm. you think they sound? And the only better? thing new about this pipe is this shanter, which would wear out over the years because yeah. you're constantly going over the notes. Mm. Yeah, of course. And it's made out of this. These are made out of ebony, except this. This is blackwood. Ah. And most pipes are made out of blackwood. It's taken me like three, four months to get this from Glasgow, Scotland, even after the deal was done and I paid for them because of the yeah. ivory in these pipes, which was was taken over 100 years ago. My, my, my uncle, my oldest uncle, fought in World War I, mm -hmm. and it was 19, he was born in like a 19, I mean 1898. And uh, these pipes probably 
were made before he was born. And uh, my father, they're much older than my father, who fought in World War II, wounded on Normandy. He survived Normandy through medical care, came back, fought through the rest of the war until two weeks into the war, and he got hit with shrapnel from a bazooka, German bazooka. Mm. And he is... He wore. The, he took that shrapnel to his grave. Yeah. Up there with my grandmother and grandfather. My grandfather was heartbroken when he was 13 years old, and he he ran away from home. Four years later, they found my grandfather, and he was working for a fellow by the name of Devil Ants Hatfield. Oh. And my grandfather was just happened to be around. At the, he witnessed the last murder and the, uh, and this feud. Yeah, the Hatfield yeah. McCoy feud. That's correct. And he also was uh, instrumental in making some of the movies. They, they used a lot of information about him mm -hmm. in the movies. But anyway, I think this is more about a memorial, about doing something that needs to be done. Yeah. God spared me in a lot of instances. The too close to talk about yeah mm -hmm. and I've got you know one I was hit on I was on a motorcycle with my feet down giving a left hand signal in the turn lane and a lady came down from behind me and smacked into me and my mm. boat motorcycle went into three pieces I said I'm gonna get hit again and I did and I found remnants Ouch. of my motorcycle in a wheel well of another vehicle which had also hit me so so, so two vehicles by the sake of, by the sake of the man upstairs I, I got away from there, and wow. I didn't even go to the hospital. I crawled off the street. <laughs> I couldn't get up. Yeah. Everything was a mess, but, you know. But you survived. When things are bad, <laughs> it may not freaking help you. Yeah. So is that what's inspired your song choice today? Uh, inspiration was not just for this one. We yeah. have three. There was also a Raymond Stevens around the corner up here in Betsy Lane. Mm-hmm. He's buried over there. We, we intend to go try to go over there too. Raymond Stevens was a Silver Star winner in Korea. And Raymond Stevens was the best squirrel shot around, but you know what? <laughs> he was really good with that M1 because he shot a lot of heads off with that M1 <laughs> with those Korean uh, red Chinese trying to come in there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with guys like him, yeah, shorten that war. Yeah, we could use a man like that now in uh, North Korea, right? <laughs> that's that's a fearsome thing right now. Yeah, yeah it sure is. Nobody right. knows what's going to happen there, and it's going to be a horrible mess. I'm yeah. afraid. Yeah. If wiser head, wiser heads don't prevail. Yeah. Well, we, we just got to hope and pray for the best, brother. Yeah. That's it. And when it comes to these bagpipes here, they came around. How long have you been playing? In November. I have been taking lessons. I was 73 years old when I started, hmm. and it'll be 10 years in November. Wow. Uh, well, I lost all my people. When you go up on that hill and you see the most of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't lose my other part of the family. I didn't. Mm. And that was so important. And we just had a family reunion. That gave me a new hope. Yeah. Before that happened, earlier I had two other brothers that come in, but what really sent me along that trail to go back to West Virginia, which I where I was born, and play for family members. He inspired me. Mm. It is inspiration and really I'm not taking the inspiration away from this man up here. Yeah. There was a reason that I have survived at so many things and I don't even want to go there because we all live a thing called life and we all have our close uh, calls, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I joined. Uh, I went to uh, McPherson, Kansas, and joined the McPherson uh, clan. I became a life member, as well with my wife. Uh, her side of the family, her father and mother died, and her sister has had some lots of tragedy in her life. So I've come to play at their grave, their parents' graveside as well. So I hope to make three stops today to do those things, which oh, means I'm going to be limited how many times I can play at one. But yeah. I've got well, three tunes, and, and one of them is Amazing Grace, which 
is a wonderful tune. Yeah. And it was inspired by a man who was, thought he was going to die, and he was praying to God that he wouldn't die, and he survived, and he wrote Amazing Grace. Newton, I believe was his name. He turned out to be a lay preacher over in, in England. Oh. Yes, sir. And uh, anyway, that pretty sums up my side. I know if uh, Thomas here, he's without him. We went up to a grave site uh, yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. Last night in a place called Peachtree. I did not recognize that place. As a kid, we used to run the woods there. Yeah. And... Isaac Honecker. Can you tell me, is Isaac Honecker and... Isaac uh, Hendricks, Sarah. I mean, Hen yeah. Hendricks, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Our mother was Hendricks. Yeah. And that's who we <laughs> played. We played beside his father and my mother and his mother, right there in the... in the, uh, what, What's the name of that grave site there? Henderson Cemetery. Head of Peachtree Horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's okay. Tough to get there. But this thing <laughs> on the hill was a struggle. If he didn't carry my pipes up, I'm not so sure I could have got it. I ran out of breath on the first tune, but then I pulled it together and was able to, yeah. you know. And, but he's in much better shape than I am. <laughs> my lungs are in pretty good shape, but <laughs> you got to have legs in shape too, you know. <laughs> they used to call me Ridge Runner, but I found out I'm not a Ridge Runner anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, buddy, well, you still made it all the way up those steps. I, I get out of breath coming up them stairs over there, so you're doing pretty good for yourself. Well, yeah. I'm not down them yet. <laughs> you can pick up the pieces at the bottom. I'll have somebody carry my pipes down for me. <laughs> well, boys, I've loved all these stories. It's really heart-touching and is an, just a complete honor to have you all in the Appalachian Wireless Studios. Uh, what's going to be your first tune that you play for us, buddy? Amazing Grace. All right. Well, if you would, go ahead and take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, I give, give you Frank water. Parsons. Well, sir, pardon me. I get my throat dry here. Hey, do what you got to do, brother. Understandable. This is going to be loud. Hey, we're ready. <sighs> Plugs in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got more lung power than I do to have to play something like that. That was amazing. Well, you're looking at a former prep trooper who could run 30 miles at one point, so <laughs> and I never smoked. Don't smoke, folks. Yeah. <laughs> listen, kids, listen. <laughs> but he absolutely. Uh, I would loved like to it. play you something, another tune that the people, uh, what they play at the games all the time, sometimes just in the opening ceremonies, you know. Oh, okay. It's called uh, Scotland the Brave. Right, take okay. it away, buddy.
Wow. Yes. Nice, nice. And you said that these run around how much money? This particular set is a collector's item. It's circa 1900, which oh, wow. on or about. And it's most likely made before that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the modern pipes aren't that much different. I have another set of 2001 by the same manufacturer, which is same patent. Yeah. The same manufacturer made these. They're gone, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, these are Kintel. And it's from Glasgow, and the Sharp Brothers over in Glasgow is the place I deal with. Glasgow is, happens to be the world championships every year is held there. And uh, many of those people go to a thing called the Royal Min uh, the Edinburgh Military, Edinburgh Royal Military Tattoo. And hmm. they have, that's a world-class show which they take people from all over the world United States included, we've been in several of those because I've got the DVDs from 1998 till current. Oh, wow. And there'll be new DVDs coming out for this year. So every year they have that. That's nice. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. And I, I was going to ask not about the bagpipes, but this other thing right here that you're fiddling around with. What yeah, in the world is pull the, this? Pull this out for me. This is called a dirt. Thank Looks you. pretty cool. Whoa. This is an officer's dirk. Oh, yeah. And for the <laughs> chief, who's four-time great, great, great grandfather of the wreath of Ticonderoga. Ticonderoga yeah. means where the waters meet. Mm. Ticonderoga, he lay the wreath. And you swear loyalty to the chief, filthy to the chief. Mm. And that's important because you're putting your own life on the line to protect your clan and to protect your chief. Wow. So those things still are active. Lord Lyon of Scotland uh, keeps everything in the proper legal terms as far as chieftainships are concerned. And so, you know, it's the real deal. But it sure does look like That's it. I'll incredible. tell you that. Come on. I hit. I've it got is. my hands full here, and I can't. <laughs> Sometimes you need a little bit of help. Don't stab me. I'm on, yeah. on my tiptoes right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have uh, time for one more tune, buddy. Okay. How about the Flower of Scotland? Hey, whatever you want to play. That's, uh, I'll play the Caledonian. Okay. You've got that, that what last one I played was was uh, uh, Scotland, Scotland the Brave, which is one of their their uh, national anthems. Yeah. Uh, I could play uh, a national anthem from Australia. Wow, you know it all. I do, I know that one too. But Scott's, Scott's Way has another one. Mm -hmm. Most of these are Burns writings, you know, Burns of fame, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Old Ang's Eye. When I was in Japan, every night at 12 o'clock, you would see, you would hear this. Old things out in bells or some form, you know, we hear that at closing time. Yeah, you know? yeah. So anyway. Uh, hey, well, whatever you what, want to play, brother. Okay. Hey, the last one that you was talking about in Japan sounded pretty good. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the uh, uh, Walking Matilda, mm -hmm. that's uh, the Australian tune. That's their, that, I don't know how many national anthems, uh, I don't know how many anthems they have for their you know, for that country. Yeah. But I know that Scotland had one more, which is called Caledonian. Okay. My dad used to call me when I was growing up, Caledonian, what makes your big head so hard? So <laughs> <laughs> I think they even had a tune to that one, one, one point. So which would you prefer, Caledonian? Or? Caledonian sounds good to me, buddy. Okay. Take it away.
Thank you. Buddy sounded beautiful. It was it's something we had, don't have much here, but I've got a world-class pipe tutor who's had bands in Houston, mm -hmm. Texas. He's had bands in San Antonio. And uh, he was a former FBI agent who, uh, who retired. Mm -hmm. He was still serving with the FBI for a long time, but then he was getting in years like myself and was getting too busy. Yeah. He teaches pipes over with a computer over the computer lines. Whoa. And with a great deal of success. He says people was really doing well doing that. I mean, wow. it's a modern time, and that kind of left me behind. Yeah. I have to go see him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Them computers is past the future. Thank you very much. Hey, it's been a complete honor. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Hey, thank you, buddy. Thank you guys for coming in and sharing your music with us. And, folks, that was You're Frank welcome. Parsons yeah. and Thomas Honaker.